In this video, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate how to set up the IDW for your 7.2 drill block. If you need a blank title block, um, I do have it linked in the instructions on your 7.2 section views Google Doc. Just make sure that you are saving that into your holes and circles folder where your IPT is saved because remember all of our files need to be bundled otherwise you're going to get some error messages from Inventor. All right so once we go ahead and open up that title block into Inventor we're going to come to base and we're going to place our front view and our right side view and the isometric views only for this part. I'm going to double click on my isometric view and get that shaded. And then what we'll do first is in our place views tab in the create panel, we're going to select section and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on my front view and we're going to learn how to do a section view, which we've never done before. Super simple and easy. The first thing that we need to do is we need to create what we call the cutting plane line. And that's kind of where that shape or that object is going to be cut in half to create that section view for us so that we can see inside features of the part. So the first thing that we want to do once selection is active, I need to left click to kind of start or activate that command. And what I want to do is I want to find the midpoint on the left line. Now our cutting plane line cannot start on the um, end of our object. So what I want to do is I just want to find the midpoint and then I'm going to come over uh, to the left a little bit and you're going to notice a construction line kind of hanging out and tracking um, to make sure that I'm aligned. Notice if I'm not aligned, that construction line disappears. All right, so I'm going to come out a little bit to the left and I'm going to left click to start my cutting plane line. And then I'm going to come over to the right and I'm going to extend outside to the right of my object about the same distance as what I did on the left. And then I'm going to left click again, which places my, my line. Now, once I've created that horizontal line, I'm going to right click and select continue. And what that does is it creates that cutting plane line. Notice you have the arrows that attach and the arrows are going to change direction based on um, how it's looking into or cutting that shape. I'm going to go ahead and move my section view up so that it acts as kind of like the top view. I'm going to place that and it's going to go ahead and label my drawing. Now I've done this a few times, so it's going to go ahead and show me section CC. Yours is probably going to be section AA, unless you've done this a few times like I have, All right? Section CC comes from the arrowheads from our cutting plane line that are labeled. Um, when you start getting into more advanced drawings, you will have multiple section views sometimes, and uh, all of the section views will be labeled with the cutting plane lines CC for C and C, and then the scale that it's also being drawn at. So the next thing that we need to go ahead and do is we need to identify our circles and place center marks. So if we come to our annotate tab, we have in our symbols panel, these four little icons here, and the one in the bottom left-hand corner is your center mark symbol. We're going to always identify holes or circles with center marks and we're always going to do that in the view that you can see the actual circle in. So I'm always going to select the outside most circle and I'm going to place my center marks on each one of those circles. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to start adding dimensions. And we will go ahead and use our dimension command in our annotate tab in order to do this. So the first thing that I want to go ahead and do is identify the overall width, the overall height, and the overall depth of our object. Now typically remember we want to keep our dimensions between adjacent views, but for this five inch dimension I'm actually going to go ahead and place the uh, dimensions 
for our whole spacing um, down there as well, because between our section view and our front view, I'm gonna place the dimensions for our whole information. So this one's gonna be a little bit different. I'm actually gonna go ahead and escape out of my dimension command, and I'm gonna move up my section view just a little bit so that I have enough room between my section view and my front view for my whole information as well. All right, so I'm gonna come back to my dimension command and I'm going to select the left hand and first center point of my first circle. I'm going to go ahead and create that dimension. And I'm going to create the dimension for my second circle. And for my third circle. And for my fourth circle. Now you're going to notice I'm going to kind of run out of room here. So what I might need to do is escape out of your dimension command and then you can just move that view up a little bit. And then if you run out of room like I did, you can always adjust your dimensions after you've created them. But again, you cannot have that dimension command active if you want to edit the placement of them. Now these dimensions don't specifically match. Uh, the 0.75, 1 inch, 1.25, and 1.25 dimensions for the circle placement because these are chain dimensions where they all line up together and they dimension from center point to center point. All right, I did mine a little bit differently, but it communicates the exact same information. So as long as you have it one way or another, you'll be totally fine. The last thing that we need to go ahead and do is um, identify the dimensions um, and of our, our four holes. But before we go and go ahead and do this, what we want to do first is come to our manage tab and we are going to select styles editor. And the reason we need to do this is because we need to change the precision or how many decimal places out inventor communicates our dimensions as. Um, your settings might be a little bit different than mine, so I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. So once you select that Styles Editor button, it, it'll take a minute or two to go ahead and load this Style and standard at Standards Editor window. That's normal. So the first thing that we'll need to do is on the left-hand side, we'll need to find the word Dimension, and we'll need to click this little plus sign to open that up. And then we're going to select Default ANSI. All right. And in the top section in the middle, we're going to find the precision section. And right now our precision is only going out to two decimal places, which is going to be problematic because some of our decimal places go out to three spots. So we're going to actually select the 3.123 because this represents our three decimal places that we need to look for. We're going to press save and close and then you're going to notice that all of our dimensions update so that there's three decimal spots. All right, and this is going to be important because of some of our diameters of our circles uh, for our holes that we're creating. All right, so the next thing that we need to go ahead and do is we need to annotate our circles. So what we'll do is we'll use the hole and thread command um, again in the annotate tab and I'm just going to click on my outside circle. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom out so that we can see things a little bit better. And I'm going to go ahead and place my dimension. Now as I'm placing my dimension, I want you to make sure that this the dimension reads the exact same as what is on our worksheet. The only difference is you're going to notice that we have three decimal places um, for all of our dimensions instead of two, which is totally fine. It's completely normal. What I'm now noticing is that my dimension is hanging off of my title block, which I do not want. So I am also going to adjust my views and move them over a little bit. This two inch view came out a little bit too far, so I'm gonna go ahead and move that in. I'm gonna come back to my hole and thread command and I'm gonna go ahead and dimension my second hole. And I'm again gonna double check my information. My third hole, 
is going to be a diameter of 0.5 and it says through. However, we do need to edit this dimension because it doesn't show the tolerance that plus or minus 0 0.002 inches um, that our instructions show us. So I'm going to exit out of the whole command. I'm going to right click on my dimension and I'm going to select edit whole note. What this does is it brings up this window and it shows me the diameter symbol and then um, kind of the default whatever that dimension is because it's going to be different for every single one. And then I'm going to click right after that caret symbol right before through and I want to make sure that I insert <clears throat> this tolerance symbol right here. So if you can't find it, this plus or minus symbol, you just need to click on this little arrow and find that tolerance symbol. And it'll go ahead and insert that symbol into our format for us. And then I'm going to make sure that there's a space and do my 0 0.002 inches and then put a space between my 0 0.002 inches and through and select OK. And then it's going to go ahead and update that dimension for me. The last circle is our counter bore and remember to select your whole and thread command and again we're just going to come at that with an angle and again I'm going to check my dimensions to make sure everything's dimensioned correctly. Now our um, assignment here is worth 12 points for the 12 dimensions so I have one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven dimensions. So we're missing one. So if you take a look, this is the one that most of you will probably forget is this one inch. We also have to dimension the center points of our circles um, from a, a height perspective, right? Otherwise we can't identify where specifically the points in this case or the center of our circles are. So I'm going to come back to my regular dimension. I'm going to select the bottom and the cutting plane line and I'm going to dimension that out to one inch. And now I have all 12 dimensions that our drawing needs. The last thing that I want to do is make sure that my title block is completely filled out, which it's not. So remember sheet, IED title block, we're going to open that up, double click on field text, and it's not letting me, I keep trying. Um, it's not letting me because my dimension command is active right now. So remember, you do need to escape out of that dimension command and then double click on field text. And then it'll let you go ahead and type your name in all caps. And then we'll click on the project title. And this is our 7.2 block. I'm gonna do mine in all caps press OK, and then our title block is completely filled out. Now, our instructions ask us to export the sheet as a PDF and submit that PDF to the Dropbox. And again, we're going to save it as our 7.2 drill block. So I'm going to come to File, Save As first. Remember, it's still as our um, title block name, so we need to save over that as 7.2 drill block. And again, I already have mine, so it's going to ask me to replace it. You'll save it in your Google Drive. Okay, so the next thing that we need to go ahead and do is, I'm going to just delete this other one here. The next thing that we need to go ahead and do is export. So we're going to come to File, Export. And we need to specify that we want to export it as a PDF. We're going to export it again where all of our files are bundled together in the holes and circles. You're going to notice that it's exporting it as a PDF for a file type. And we'll go ahead and select Save. Once you go ahead and export this as a PDF, then you'll log into PowerSchool Learning. You'll find our 7.2 drill block assignment, and you will update um, and upload the 7.2 drill block PDF. The PDF is the only file that I will need in order to grade your assignment.